Hello cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And folks, it's too late to panic. The shortages are here and they are not going away. Meat, chicken, frozen food, fresh fruit and vegetables are all disappearing from the shelves. And it is going to affect me and you. As we go through tonight's show, it's a YouTube um, premiere, so I can actually join you over in the comments. Now, if this is your first time visiting, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Today is Monday, the 10th of January, 2022. To join the live chat, you'll need to be logged into your Gmail account or your YouTube account. Now, I'm sure you will have questions during the show, and that's why I have made this a premiere and not a regular live, so that I can answer them as you ask them. I'll be in chat right alongside you. If you could please ask your questions in all capital letters so they stand out, I will do my best to answer them as they appear. Now, I say it every week, but the comments scroll by really quickly and it's hard to pick the questions up if they don't stand out. Tonight's show, as I said, isn't a scheduled Cheapskates Club show, but I think the subject is just too important to wait. Folks, if you are not prepared, you are going to be miserable. And that's not me scaremongering or being a happiness thief or anything else I've been called in the last few days. And there have been a few interesting names. That is just fact. Right now, there are Queenslanders who are stuck in their homes, or even worse, they've been evacuated to halls somewhere because of flooding. They can't control the floods, but they can control their preparedness. If they weren't prepared to stay at home or be evacuated, then they are going to be miserable and they are reliant on someone else to help them. Now, I have a friend whose home was flooded over the weekend and her Facebook announcement started with, well, remember, in a disaster, help is not coming. Glad I have the mindset to help myself. She knew that help would be slow if they got any at all. And she was prepared to help herself and her family. We all need that mindset. In a disaster, help isn't going to be instant. This, it won't be the movies, guys. It will be real life. Help, if any, is going to take at least a day, often longer, depending on what the disaster is, to arrive. So prepare. Prepare now. I'm hearing and seeing, as I'm sure you all are, that supermarket shelves are bare, that butcher shops are empty and closed, that greengrocers have very little in the way of fresh fruit and vegetables to sell. Even the back to school sales are suffering. So if you don't have food in the pantry, if you don't have food in your house, you will go hungry if the supermarket shelves are bare and so will your children. Now, food banks are suffering too. No drivers to deliver to the supermarkets means no drivers to deliver to them. So they're running out of food. Charities are in the same boat. And both food banks and charities have been struggling for the whole of this crisis, the whole of this pandemic. And this is a crisis that isn't going to go away easily. It's not going to go away quickly. Even if the government changes the isolation rules for truck drivers and meat process workers, it's not going to be over just like that. Now, I had to laugh while I was doing some research to make sure I was on the right track with this show, I had to laugh at an article on the ABC website. 
because apparently, according to the ABC, if you keep three week three weeks worth of food in the pantry, <laughs> you're good. You're good for the current situation. You're good for whatever will life will throw at you. Because in three weeks, miraculously, they resolve themselves. There are no more crises. Crises. That's a word. Well, guys. We're heading into hmm, 21 months of pandemic. I'd say that's a crisis that's lasted a bit longer than three weeks. But this delivery issue is just one part of a huge disaster that I think is still in the making. Now, I was out today just to check prices. Folks, at my local discount butcher, sausages plain old snags those mystery bags that we all love on the barbecue are $11.99 a kilo $11.99 a kilo for a synthetic bag of mystery meat now that's a $4 a kilo increase from early December which was the last time I bought them and I was complaining about $7.99 a kilo then mince that was $9.99 a kilo two weeks ago, is now $12.99 a kilo. That's a $3 increase. That will hurt your grocery budget. It's going to hurt mine. Prices are rising. That's a part of this crisis. Milk has gone up. Have you noticed that your fresh milk has gone up? Have you seen the prices of fruits and vegetables? They are outrageous, especially for this time of year in Australia. Flour is going up in, up in price. That leads to bread going up and to biscuits and things, other things going up. And it's going to be in short supply. I spoke about this way back in 2021 because of a grain shortage that's expected to hit mid this year. Now, along with the shortages for whatever reason, and there are many different reasons for them, frankly, they don't matter because the shortages are here and they're not going away anytime soon, your grocery budget is going to be damaged big time. But something the news isn't talking about, and it hit me today, is fuel. Now, I'm sure you're all aware of the AdBlue crisis that's been in the news for two months and that affects diesel vehicles. Well, have you noticed mainstream media has gone quiet on that lately? That's still around. It's still, it's still happening. It's not resolved yet. But what about the current crisis of truck drivers being out because they're sick or a close contact and have to isolate? Yes, we're being told there, that crisis is affecting deliveries, but they're only talking about deliveries to supermarkets. Folks, if there are no truck drivers for food deliveries, then it makes sense to take it a step further and say there are or there is a shortage of truck drivers for fuel deliveries. But no one's talking about this. And this worries me more than the food delivery crisis. Firstly, because no one's talking about it. But because if you run out of fuel, if the service stations aren't getting their deliveries, you won't be able to refill the car. And if your car is empty, you can't easily go anywhere. Unless you live within walking distance of shops or markets or you're fit enough to ride a bike. If you have a bike, but is that not being talked about for a reason? See my tinfoil hat's coming out here. And if there's no fuel being delivered, you could say, oh, I'll just get the bus. But if there's no fuel being delivered to service stations, it won't be being delivered to bus depots. So eventually the buses could not you know, they could just stop running because there'll be no fuel. Now, you could, could say I'm scaremongering again. That's fine. If that's what you think, that's fine. And as I've said before, there is no reason to be scared if you're prepared. 
The only time you'll be scared is if you are not prepared. So just stop and think about it and see if you're not prepared, if you shouldn't be afraid, if there's not a reason for you to be worried about these things. I, I suggest you keep your vehicles full. Now, I'm not letting my car, uh, my car get under three quarters full. I rarely do that anyway. And I've suggested the kids do the same. Wayne always keeps the patrol full. It's just a habit, a matter of habit with him that when it hits three, three quarters, he fills up. And you know, if there is a fuel shortage, because we have a stocked pantry, we won't need to use the car unless it is for an emergency or an essential trip. We will be able to make our fuel that we have last. Now, if you've listened to me at all over the years, if you've read anything that I've ever written, you will have, at the very least, started to prepare. You'll have added a little extra to your pantry. You'll have got in some extra washing powder. You'll have started to add to your pantries. And no, I don't care what anyone says, building your pantry and filling it with food and other things that you need to survive is not hoarding. It just isn't. It is being sensible. It is being wise. It is being a good steward. Hoarding is when you just buy, usually willy-nilly, sometimes with a bit of a plan, things that you don't need, that you don't like, that you don't use for no reason other than you could and you just keep them. And you let them pile up in cupboards and on shelves and in the shed and do nothing with it. That is hoarding. Cheapskaters do not hoard. We build our pantries so they can maintain our families, especially through disasters and tough times. Don't stop preparing. Don't stop building your pantries. As you use something, don't just add it to the shopping list, but make a note of it and look for it next time you go out. If you see it, get it, because it may not be there the next time you go out. Then you'll be sorry and you'll have missed out. Now, especially over the weekend, I've noticed a lot of grumbling about cheap skaters who prepare. It bothers me a bit, firstly because I don't like grumbling, but there are a lot of people who haven't prepared and who are getting snarky because others have. Well, I'm sorry, but if you are too lazy to prepare, that's your problem. If you truly think that you don't need to be prepared, that someone else is going to come to your aid and fix your problem and save you, so be it. But don't get cranky when you haven't prepared and they don't come to your aid. You don't get any help. But your neighbour or your family member or your friend or your colleague who has used their time and their money and their energy wisely and built up their pantries built up their savings and prepared for a disaster of any kind is safe and stress-free. They were the smart one. You weren't. This isn't going to win me any fans, I know, but I'm saying it anyway. Anyone can do something to prepare and you can do it regularly. Now, you might be on a tight income. So what? I've been there too. I know what a tight income is. So if I seem heartless and uncaring, I'm not. But I'm also not going to be sympathetic if you're just going to whinge and whine and have the poor me attitude and not do anything to prepare, not do anything to help yourself. Now, I'm more than happy to help and offer suggestions if you're trying to get ahead 
if you want to build your pantry, if you want to prepare, you want to know how to do it, even on a really low income, ask the questions. I'll do my best to answer them. If you use your time wisely, you can shop carefully. You can buy on sale. If you get things for half off, that's great because you're actually getting two for the price of one. That's a quick way to build your pantry. But even 10%, 20% off is good because it frees up money in your budget that you can use to buy something else. Look for things that do double duty. Don't just buy something and use it for one particular thing. And buy ingredients. I can't stress this enough. Buy ingredients. Because remember, ingredients give you options. If you're not a cook, learn to cook. Go through our recipe file. Get online. Go to Google. Find a step-by-step -step for a recipe and follow it. Learn to cook. Teach yourself. There's no excuse for not being able to cook in this day and age. If you have ill health, I'm really sorry you're unwell. It's hard. It's unpleasant. It makes life miserable. I've been there. I'm still there. But just do something. Even when I was bedridden, and I was for almost two years, although not many of you knew that, I was still able to build a pantry. I used my computer to find the best deals. I researched budget recipes. I hunted for better deals on our utilities. And when I found it, I used the spare cash to build the pantry and our emergency fund. I understand if you are chronically ill, I do. I live with chronic illness every day. There are days when I struggle to lift my head off the pillow, let alone put my feet on the floor and get out of bed, face the day and deal with what's coming. There are days when the pain is so severe, I'd like to chop off a limb. It couldn't hurt anymore. So on those days, I rest. Again, you don't know that. But on the other days, and I call them my good days, I get things done. So on your good days, do something to build your pantry. It could be something as simple as you tidy it up. And then you can do an inventory and you can use that inventory to create a meal plan. And from the meal plan, you can make a shopping list so that you can then look at the weekly um, sales and decide what to buy where so that you can build your pantry, save some money, get some extra inventory in your cupboards. Now, that could take you a week or two weeks to do. You don't have to do it all at once. Just do something. Just do something towards building your pantry. Just because you're sick, it's n it's a reason, not an excuse. And you can do something. Low income is another grumble I hear about all the time. Look, even on a low income, you can prepare. We have cheap skaters that are on, that they live on the age pension. It's low. They live on unemployment. It's low. But they still manage. They eat well. They pay their bills. They do what they have to do. So low income, no excuse. Play the garden. Um, choose some meals that you can make from scratch. Ten. List them. Then list the ingredients and um, buy those ingredients. And if you're buying ingredients, you'll be able to make other things because, remember, ingredients give you options. Give up smoking or drinking. You know, I know here I'm the happiness thief. And use the money to build your pantry. I did a little sum hmm, over Christmas, New Year. Cigarettes run on average at $2 each. $2 each. So if you're a smoker... Try putting $2 in a jar every time you light up. If nothing else, you'll quickly save some money that you can use to build your pantry. At best, it will be enough to make you realise that you're just burning cash and killing yourself at the same time. And it's a slow, agonising debt. Same with drinking. 
if that bottle of wine may have been from the five dollar bargain bin but if you can't afford to build your pantry you can't afford the five dollar bottle of wine use the five dollars to buy ingredients for your pantry it doesn't have to be forever just until you get the pantry stocked just until you have enough to survive a crisis I know that there are lots of you, many, many of you, who have been pantry building and stockpiling for years and years and years, much longer than I've been doing it. You know how to prepare. I also know that often you've been mocked for your sensible way of running your home and your pantry, that you've been tormented and teased. I have too. My mother was before me. All I can say is ignore the mockers. I like to think that they're just jealous. And then I like to think that when they're hungry and the children are starving, who are they going to turn to? Well, they're going to turn to us. We who have been smart enough to know that a pantry full of food makes the tough times so much easier to get through. It's so much easier to face a crisis if your belly's full. It means that the grocery money can be used for something else if it's needed for something else. It means that when food is in short supply, we can eat, we can stay clean, we can keep our homes clean and our pets fed. That's why we build our pantries. And it means that we can help the others, even if we really just want to shake them or twist their ear when they're hungry. But even an extra week's worth of food in the pantry is going to be a help. Although I'm, <laughs> I'm happy if you want to go for the three weeks, the ABC suggests as a minimum, suits me down to the ground. It's not hoarding folks, it's being smart. Now, falling back on your pantry doesn't always have to be because of a disaster like a flood or a cyclone or a pandemic. It could be that you've got migraine or the kids have got chicken pox or you get a bigger than budgeted for electricity bill. If you can stay home and know you're set for food, stress is gone. If you know that you can take the week's grocery money or the fortnight's grocery money and put it towards that power bill and know that you're still going to be able to eat, the kids won't be hungry, the stress is eased. I did a lot of videos on this last year and the subject caused lots of discussion. Some of it was friendly, some of it wasn't so. It doesn't matter. I hope this video... Um, has the same reaction if for no other reason then at least you are thinking about what I'm saying hopefully you'll take notice if you haven't already start preparing it's it's nothing you don't need to go to extremes and you're not going to be a crazy person just prepare. There's the saying, um, who controls the food supplies control. Who's the saying? Who supplies, who controls the food supply controls the people. Let me get that out. What a tongue twister. Now it's credited to Henry Kissinger and I don't know if that's true, but that's who I've always been told it said. And the saying is pretty much true. But that's only part of the quote. It's not the whole quote. It goes on to say, who controls the energy can control whole continents. So food shortages, fuel shortages, pretty much ensure that our whole country, our whole nation, our island continent is being controlled. Yes, I know, it's a little tinfoil haddish again, but it's true. It is true. Controlling people by controlling food isn't new. 
it's been done for centuries um the last hundred years or so think back to the soviet union and how the people had to line up for bread had to line up for their food they were controlled by food to world war ii and the prison camps and the prisoners were pretty much controlled by the lack of food they became physically weak and ill they were unable to fight back they were controlled by fear and food when countries are invaded, the first thing to be controlled are the food and energy supplies. Is that what is happening in 2022? You do your own research and make up your own mind. I'll leave it there. But don't stop preparing. Just don't. Things are not going to get any easier. Now, I personally think 2022 is going to be a good year for us cheapskaters because we are going to make it a good year. But we still need to be preparing. Remember, be prepared, not scared. And don't stop preparing. Thank you so much for joining me during this premiere show tonight. I know it was a little off schedule. I hope it didn't throw too many people out. But I really did think it was important that we get it out there. If you like the show, please give it a thumbs up. If you know someone who might like this show or who might benefit from knowing about Cheapskates Club, please use the share button to send them a link. It's just underneath me here. And as always, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, now is a really good time to do so because we have a sensational giveaway. We have a dehydrator. And as soon as we get 5,000 subscribers, we'll be drawing that um, dehydrator. So it's a good time to subscribe. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well just hit the bell so that you'll be notified when I go live or when I upload another video. Thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you in the Cheapskates Club forum sharing your cheapskating experiences very, very soon.